The LA Kings look to snap their season-high five-game losing skid. If that doesn't happen soon, what's the next step to get on track? We'll talk about that and more next on this episode of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. The LA Kings are still looking for a win in 2024, riding a season-high five-game losing skid as they play game two of their six-game, 10-day road trip tonight in Florida. Their opponent, one of the more successful teams over the past five years, including a pair of Stanley Cup titles, that would be the Tampa Bay Lightning. Kings check in with a record of 20-10-6, and six, third place in the Pacific Division, sixth place in the Western Conference, and 11th in the NHL in points with 46 Kings are 13-3-1 on the road, best road record in the NHL, but they're also riding that season-high five-game losing streak. Lightning are 19-17-5, fifth place in the Atlantic Division, 11th in the Eastern Conference, and 18th in the NHL in points. With 43, they are 11-5-3 at home, coming off a 7-3 loss in Boston to the Bruins on Saturday. Now, the Lightning have lost four of their last six games, including two of their last three at home. That said, they are currently one point out of a wild card spot in the East, playing desperate hockey to try and claw their way back into the playoffs where they are used to being over the past few seasons. The LA Kings have dropped to 10th in the NHL in goals scored per game at 3.36 with their current losing skid and offensive slump. Although they did have a three-goal game in their last game against Washington, that 4-3 loss, allowing that goal in the final moments. Kings have slipped a tiny bit down to second in the NHL as far as goals allowed per game at 2.41. The surging Winnipeg Jets right now have taken over the top spot. Lightning are 14th in goals scored per game in the NHL at 3.24, and they're 27th in the league in goals allowed per game at 3.49. L.A. has moved up, believe it or not, slightly on the power play. They're now 18th in the NHL at 19.7%, still number one in the league on the penalty kill, which could be very important for tonight's game. 87.4% uh, is the PK for your L.A. Kings. Tampa Bay, second in the league on the power play, 29%, 14th on the penalty kill at 80.3%. Uh, this is another matchup for the LA Kings number one ranked penalty kill against one of the top power play units in the league. That is something we're going to focus on, something we're going to watch closely tonight. Can the Kings keep Tampa Bay's power play from being effective and from obviously getting results and goals uh, to hurt the Kings? And now the Kings have had some success recently against some of the better power plays in the NHL, in particular the Edmonton Oilers and the Toronto Maple Leafs. In those two previous games against those teams uh, the who have top five power plays, the Kings killed off seven of eight power play opportunities against. Hopefully that trend will continue tonight against Tampa Bay. Checking in on who to watch for the Tampa Bay Lightning. If you've paid attention to the NHL over the last little bit, it'll be a very familiar group. Uh, and the Tampa Bay Lightning are led by their top line, Steven Stamkos, Braden Point, and in particular, Nikita Kucherov, who is having an MVP caliber season. Kucherov leads the NHL in points with 67, and he is second in goals with 28, second only to Austin Matthews of the Toronto Maple Leafs. As for the two netminders in this game, Kings are expected to go with Cam Talbot. He is still second in the NHL in goals allowed, uh, goals against average uh, per game, 2.17. 
and he is uh, third in the NHL in save percentage at 923. The uh, Kings will be going up against uh, the Lightning's two-time Stanley Cup winning netminder, Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, now, he missed the first 30 games of this season, recovering from off-season surgery. Still looks like he's trying to find his game. Uh, the former Vesna Trophy winner and Conn Smythe Trophy winner as playoff MVP is 32nd in the NHL right now in save percentage. Uh, he is um, also 39th in save percentage at 895. Uh, Vasilevsky's record so far this year, 9-9, nine and nine, but he is a big goalie, takes up a lot of space, uh, is a very competitive guy, has uh, come up big in big-time games before. So even though he's not quite on his game so far, Andre Vasilevsky is still a formidable goaltender to go up against. Let's check the Kings lineup for tonight. And LA is uh, going back a bit to their lineup from they had before this recent shakeup of the lines. Um, Adrian Kempe is going back on the top line with Andre Kopitar and Quinton Byfield. Philip Deneau is moving back up to the second line along with Trevor Moore, who drops down from his brief appearance on the top line. Back to the second line with Deneau and Kevin Fiala. Uh, the third line, the P.L. Dubois line, will be back to Arthur Kaliev and Alex Laferriere. And the fourth line, a familiar Blake Lazat, Trevor Lewis, and Carl Grundstrom. As for the defensive pairs, again, uh, we had that quick appearance from Brant Clark. He's apparently going back out of the lineup tonight. So Matt Roy moves from the third pairing to the second pairing, along with Vladislav Gavrikov. And Jordan Spence draws back into the lineup on the third pairing along with Andreas England. Of course, the top pairing continues to be Andre, uh, excuse me, uh, Drew Doughty and Mikey Anderson. And the uh, goaltender for tonight's game will be Cam Talbot. So interesting that Todd McClellan uh, has decided uh, he wanted to shake things up briefly. Uh, apparently didn't see what he wanted to see. So now he's going back to the lineup we've seen for most of the season with the LA Kings. Interesting that he decided not to give this a little bit more time uh, we did talk about on Monday's show how it, it appears that it hasn't really worked out in particular for Trevor Moore. Uh, it did work out for uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois and that line uh, a bit, but um, Tom McCullough deciding it was just a brief change and now going back to the way things have been for most of the season. So interesting move on his part. Um, let's check in on the keys to victory tonight for the LA Kings and talked about it off of the top when looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning, they are led without question by their top line, and it is a very talented line. Again, Steven Stamkos, Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov, those guys not only lead the offense from the top line, but also are very key members on their very good power play. So the number one key for the Kings, got to contain that top trio and that top line for Tampa Bay as much as possible. Also stay out of the penalty box if you can. Uh, keep that penalty kill going strong. If that trio gets uh, multiple points for the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight, uh, probably not going to be able to win that game. Got to try and hold them to a point or two. Uh, and that's easier said than done, but the rest make the other players for Tampa Bay beat you. It's not a great supporting cast for the Lightning as they have had in the past, as they have had with their Stanley Cup winning teams. It's all about their top line. Uh, for the Kings, the second key is start strong and finish strong. Uh, the Kings... Uh, are a much better team when they have the lead. Uh, obviously, strong defensively, uh, but it, it can't just be about a good first period, which we have seen recently, in particular against Washington, a great first period, but also couldn't finish on their opportunities. So try and get off to a good start, try and get that first goal, and carry it through for the rest of the game. Uh, it has not been something the Kings have been able to do lately. And I think the third key for the Kings is be aggressive, but be in control. Obviously, the Kings are in a slump right now. Everybody knows it. They desperately want to get out of it. They know they're a better team than what they've shown of late. Um, and John Wooden, the great uh, Hall of Fame, legendary basketball coach at UCLA, had a great, uh, he had a, well, he had a lot of great sayings, but one in particular that I loved was he would tell his players, be quick, but don't hurry. And the translation is obviously that you have to be decisive, you have to be aggressive, but you can't be out of control. And I think one of the problems uh, with the Kings uh, and teams that are in slumps is 
the desire is there to play hard and get out of it and do what you can. And that's great. But you also can't be so overly aggressive and kind of flying around all over the ice that you get out of position uh, that you maybe you take penalties. You still have to be in control. So it is a fine line for sure for the L.A. Kings. Again, be aggressive, but be in control. Uh, skate hard, get on the forecheck, but don't be careless. Don't get out of position. The desire is there for the Kings to get out of this slump, but they also have to maintain that control as well. And we do have a quote from Kings captain Andre Kopitar asked about trying to get out of this slump. And he told LA Kings insider Zach Dooley earlier this morning, quote, it takes an A plus effort from everyone, a complete team game from everyone to bust out of a slump. End quote. And I don't disagree with the captain, but I would say it also takes leadership from the top. Guys like Andre Kopitar, Drew Doughty, uh, the guys that wear the letter on their sweater, Philip Deneau, those kind of guys have to also lead the way as well. Let's see a big game from the captain, the LA Kings leading scorer tonight. Lead by example, which he's done his whole career, and help the LA Kings get back on track tonight with a much needed win. By the way, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, I'm trying to do my part. I'm trying to mix things up. I'm wearing the hat backwards. I got the rally cap. Uh, hopefully it can do something. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get the Kings out of this slump. But if they can't get out of the slump, what could be the next move soon? We hope not for the LA Kings. We'll talk about that more here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action right now. Uh, the NFL playoffs are getting ready to start. It's a very exciting time if you're an NFL fan, but you can also get in on the NHL action as well. Want to place a bet on the LA Kings to break out of that slump and get a win against Tampa Bay tonight? Think the over-under will be more or less than six and a half goals? Well, just use the FanDuel app, which is very easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including point spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on the NHL and NFL this season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So the Kings are riding that five-game losing skid. I said on Monday's show that I thought the seat of LA Kings head coach Todd McClellan was warm. But it could get hot in a hurry. And I said at the start of the season that Todd McClellan was likely coaching for his job this year. Now, he did get the one-year extension at the beginning of the season, but I think the Kings would not hesitate if they felt it was necessary to make a coaching change. Now, I've also said the Kings are not playing terrible hockey right now. I do think that management takes that into account. How is the team playing? Not just necessarily the win-loss record. Um, but the results have to be there as well at some point. And as we know in sports, it is a lot easier to fire the coach than to fire the players. So I don't know what their the number is as far as how much longer this losing skid or the losing ways for the Kings goes before they decide to make a change. But if I'm if I'm GM Rob Blake, right, if I'm doing a little role playing here, uh, I think you and your front office staff always should be preparing for things that could go wrong. For example, God forbid Cam Talbot is lost for the season with an injury. I, If I'm the Kings, at some point, I've already had a list of players and contingency plans of what we would do if we lost our number one all-star goalie at this point. Uh, you have to think ahead of the game. You don't wait for something to happen and then react to it. So I think that Rob Blake and the front office have sat together and said, okay, if we have to make a coaching change, what's our list? What's our thinking? What direction do we want to go in? You don't want to get to the point where it's like, you know, you, you have to think again ahead of the curve. And I, I would I would imagine they have done this, uh, had conversations, not that anything is imminent, but you have to keep your options open. So what would likely be 
the moves for Rob Blake and the front office as far as a coaching change? Well, I think the first place that teams always look is within. That would be your assistant coaches or your coaches within your organization. Um, if Todd McClellan were to be replaced, I would be shocked if assistant coaches Jim Hiller or Trent Yanni would be the uh, players to, or they should say the coaches to replace him to be promoted. Um, there is certainly Marco Sturm, uh, former Kings assistant, now the head coach of the Ontario Reign in the AHL. He has been very highly regarded in the organization. Seems like he's being groomed to eventually be the head coach of the LA Kings. But uh, you would be turning over a potential Stanley Cup caliber team to a guy who has zero NHL head coaching experience. I don't see that happening if the Kings were to make a move. I think it makes sense for the LA Kings with what they're spending on their roster, with the trades they've made recently, with what they've talked about themselves being a team that gets into the playoffs, that makes some noise and is a candidate for a Stanley Cup, that you're looking for a veteran head coach who's probably won a Stanley Cup. Now, there are two big-name coaches out there right now, but they both come with a ton of baggage. Uh, that would be Joel Quinville, three-time Stanley Cup winning coach with the Chicago Blackhawks, and Mike Babcock, former Stanley Cup winning coach uh, with the Detroit Red Wings and got the Anaheim Ducks to the Stanley Cup final back in the day. Now, Joel Quinville was fired by the Florida Panthers a few years back uh, as a result of him lying to NHL investigators over what he knew with the Chicago Blackhawks sexual assault scandal when he was the head coach there, said he didn't know anything about it. That was a lie. Ended up being fired. Um, and he has not gotten an interview for a job since. As a matter of fact, I believe he needs special permission from the commissioner, Gary Bettman, to even be able to interview for a job. Uh, Mike Babcock was fired this offseason right before the start of the season by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, he's a guy who has been accused of improper uh, conduct with players, uh, something he's been accused of in other places like Toronto and Detroit as well. Uh, it, it, it involved, I'm not going to get into it, but it involved just basically kind of intimidation tactics, things like that with certain players, uh, things that were old school that really don't fly in the NHL anymore. I would be stunned if the Kings were interested in either of those two guys. Yes, they've got the Stanley Cup uh, pedigree, but the resume is ugly, and uh, I think both those guys are probably done coaching in the NHL, there is a recently fired coach this season that has recently won a Stanley Cup, and that would be former St. Louis Blues head coach Craig Berube. Uh, now, he has no connections with the Kings organization that I know of, but he is a no-nonsense coach who has experience taking over a team in season, turning them around and guiding them to a Stanley Cup, which is exactly what he did with St. Louis. I think he would be an intriguing option. Uh, former Oilers head coach Jay Woodcroft would be an interesting choice for no other reason than he would be replacing Todd McClellan, I believe, for a second time. I, I believe Woodcroft was hired to take over from McClellan when he was fired in Edmonton, and they're still very good friends. That would be a very curious situation, although I don't think that would be one of the bigger candidates for the Kings. Uh, there are some other veteran coaches out there. Uh, Bruce Boudreau, who once upon a time was in the Kings organization as the head coach for their then AHL affiliate, the Manchester Monarchs. Unfortunately for Bruce, uh, I know he would love to get another chance at being an NHL head coach, but he's been known as a great regular season coach, not so great uh, in the playoffs. And there are always, you know, Rob Blake, the GM, obviously had a relationship with Todd McClellan. He played for him in San Jose. And those kinds of relationships, people that you know, or have been a part of your organization before, those things usually are taken into a lot of consideration. Uh, there are a few guys out there. Uh, Ian LaPerriere, former LA King, you might remember if you're an older fan like me, a fan favorite. He's been coaching in the Philadelphia Flyers organization. He's with their AHL team. He played with both Luke Robitaille, the Kings president, and GM Rob Blake. Um, another former King uh, is out there, Dan Bilesma. He won a Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's now doing a really good job for the Seattle Kraken with their AHL affiliate came within one game last season of winning the uh, the Calder Trophy in the AHL. He's with the Coachella Valley Firebirds here uh, in Southern California. There is one other former Stanley Cup winning coach who was fired not long ago who's out there and available as well. It's a name you might be familiar with. It's Daryl Sutter, <laughs> fired by the Calgary Flames this offseason season. Uh, the team underachieved last year. The players, frankly, um, didn't like playing for Daryl Sutter. 
and he is a coach, as uh, you probably know if you paid attention when he was here in L.A., no-nonsense guy, uh, but does get the maximum effort out of the players. Uh, he doesn't have a long shelf life, but then again, uh, you know, I don't know at his age that he's looking to coach much longer. That would be a very, very interesting phone call uh, if Rob Blake decided to call up Daryl Sutter and see if he was interested in returning to the LA Kings, where, of course, he was a midseason hire back in 2012, guided the Kings to their first Stanley Cup and then another cup two years later. So, again, just having a discussion, talking about what are the available options out there for the LA Kings if they do have to make the unfortunate decision to make a coaching change. Like I said, they're not there yet, but I think if Rob Blake is doing his due diligence, he is having discussions with his staff. Okay, if we were to do this, what are we looking at? Who are the guys available? Who are the guys we think could come in and do the job? If I were looking at that list, uh, I think a Craig Berube would be a very interesting choice for the LA Kings, but just, just talking about it, Hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully the Kings can pull themselves out of this situation and we won't have to talk about a coaching change. Now, there is another option for the Kings to try and shake things up. We'll talk about that, that next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event. I don't because I use Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I have personally used Game Time to buy tickets to NHL and NFL games this year, and I am a very satisfied customer. The app is very easy to navigate and use. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, and their best price guaranteed. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you your complete peace of mind with your purchase. I love how you can view your seats before you buy them. You can know exactly the view you're going to get when you get to, to the stadium. Uh, all in prices show you the total up front so you know what you're getting. Uh, a great deal without any hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps of the app. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On NHL, L O C K. Uh, L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The LA Kings face the Tampa Bay Lightning, four p.m. Pacific time tonight. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast of your LA Kings on Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. Well, making a coaching change is a big move, but it may not be the only move the Kings would be considering at this time. If you remember last season, uh, it was earlier in the year. Uh, it was late November. The Kings had just lost a wild 9-8 overtime game of the Seattle Kraken, and GM Rob Blake had a closed-door team meeting, uh, kind of laid it out with the team as far as them not doing what was necessary, and they also put Cal Peterson on waivers uh, I got a lot of attention, uh, and it seemed to shake the Kings a bit out of their out of their funk. Now, they did, uh, a few games later, get a huge win in Boston over the Bruins, who were having an incredible season at the time. So it's not just you know the GM or the president coming down and having a talk with the team and stressing some things, letting them know that time is running out, they need to change things, get their game going. But it also takes a big moment on the ice as well, and that did happen for the LA Kings last season. Uh, obviously, we're a bit later in the year now. The Kings were 12, 9, and 4 when uh, they had the uh, Rob Blake meeting. Uh, so we're a little farther along in the season this year, but still not even to the halfway point. Um, is there anyone the Kings would put on waivers as they did Cal Peterson? No. But a trade could be an option to try and shake things up a little bit. And if you're looking at pieces that could be expendable, uh, I think you would probably think of defenseman Matt Roy. Uh, who is a very valuable member of the team, a solid contributor, but is an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year and could be difficult for the Kings to resign. He also would be uh, very sought after by a lot of teams out there in the NHL looking to upgrade their blue line. You could also potentially move young defenseman Jordan Spence, who may be seen as expendable right now because of big prospect, pro prospect Brant Clark looking for more playing time at the NHL level. I think there would be teams out there interested in a good young puck moving defenseman like Jordan Spence as well. And perhaps maybe even the red hot Samuel Fagimo right now in Ontario. Maybe he's opened the eyes of a lot of teams out there 
and they could be interested in acquiring a exciting young forward with a lot of potential. Um, but of course, what would the Kings be looking for in return? Um, you know, perhaps a veteran, hard nosed forward who has playoff experience, someone who can bring an attitude, bring jam, as they like to say in hockey terms and be a problem for other teams around the net. I don't have any specific names to throw out there for you, but maybe that could be an option for the Kings. Um, you know, looking for uh, some veteran type guy again, who could come in, be an agitator of sorts, uh, somebody who can contribute as well, uh, but help them uh, for a playoff push and that kind of thing. I, I don't think the Kings will do that, especially with Matt Roy. I mean, you, you don't want to cut off your nose despite your face. If the Kings are going to make a deep playoff run this year, Matt Roy is a guy that they will need on their blue line. But uh, when you, you know, desperate times could call for desperate measures. The Kings are not quite in that desperate spot yet. Uh, I think they would make a coaching change before they would make any kind of roster shakeup. Um, but it is something to consider for the LA Kings. Hopefully, again, this will not be necessary. Uh, hopefully, the Kings can right the ship themselves. Uh, we talked about Andre Kopitar's quote, the leadership of this team, Kopitar, Dowdy, Deno, those guys. Uh, it's time for them to step up, lead on the ice and off the ice, and get the LA Kings through this roughest part of their season so far. Get them back on track. Hopefully it starts tonight with a win over the Tampa Bay Lightning. The team can start to feel better about themselves and move forward from there. We have seen the LA Kings this season with this group be one of the better teams in the NHL. We know it's in them, but they have to persevere, weather the storm, and get through this sooner rather than later for you every day is those of you that listen and watch locked on la kings every day coming up on tomorrow's show hopefully hopefully recap a win for the la kings over the tampa bay lightning uh we will also talk about coming up uh soon a, a preview of the kings uh next game that'll be against the florida panthers as they go through this florida road trip we'll recap that game as well on our friday show plus another fan feedback show i'm sure We'll have some comments from you guys about options for the LA Kings if this slump continues. The email address, as always, is lockedoneddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, your thoughts and comments always welcome in the comments section as well. And don't forget to stay interactive with the show by following us on X, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Locked On. LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you tomorrow, hopefully after a Kings win. We close out the show by always saying, Go Kings Go!